Now I cannot do any evolution, I cannot do anything because the first thing is fitness function evaluation. If I do selection by this, it will be different. If I do selection by this, it will be different. So which one do I select individuals from? And there could be many, many, many objective functions. So now what I'll have to do is I will have to define what are good individuals and what are poor individuals. In a broader sense, now I'll have to define what is the overall aim that I have in mind that I would like my optimization algorithm to solve. So let's say that I'm a laptop making company with the same old example. So what the, what do I want? Do I want the best configuration laptops? Do I want the lowest price laptops? Do I want laptops with, uh, with a high RAM? I am adaptive on the processor. It's just that the cost should be intermediate. What do I want? What should be my market strategy? What should be the aim so that people buy from me? Because if I design high configuration laptops, the price will go up and people will not buy. If I design low configuration laptop, it will be affordable, but people will not buy because of a small price. If I keep everything as mediocre, it may not solve anybody's purpose. A uh, researcher may want a high GPU for the machine learning algorithm. It still doesn't satisfy my price. Now, what's the best laptop? Only the user knows. What's the best laptop? Only the user knows. And I cannot, as a company, just ask the user again and again that which laptop is better. Even if I have a very good customer connect, they are infinite laptops possible. How many laptops will I show to the user after 10, 15, 20, 25, the user will be like, I have a real job. It's not to tell you which laptop I would like to buy. So let's define the problem and let's define from this intuitive example what you really, really want to do. So in the laptop design problem, there are infinite laptops possible with infinite configurations, price combinations. So there are infinite laptops possible. I want to give the best laptop to the user for which I will have to ask the user multiple times so I'll say whether you prefer this laptop or that laptop and I'll get some latent information about the preferences of the user. Do you like this laptop or you like this laptop? Do you like this laptop more or do you like this laptop? So every time I'll give in two laptops configuration to the user and ask the user to select one based on which I'll get some information about the laptop. My aim is to get the best laptop to the user to get the best laptop to my customer asking the minimal amount of questions, asking the minimal amount of questions. So this problem can be solved into two parts. So that's my best laptop design. So I can solve this thing into two parts. So part one is Designed a few laptops and part two is let the user select best laptop. From the designs shown. So it's a two-part problem. The first one is that I design a few laptops and then I give it to the user to select one from the design. In fact, if you do buy laptops, this is exactly what the companies are doing. So every company has a number of laptops for you. It's there at your favorite store. Then you go and tell the shopkeeper, show me some laptops. And that person shows you some laptops. You make a choice. This one is good. Then the laptop 
guy shows you more laptops which are similar to that one, then you make a choice. Then the person shows you more laptops which are similar to the one. So if there are ladies listening, that's how you buy dresses. There are infinite dresses possible with all the shape, size, configuration, colors, color combinations, patterns. The fashion houses, they select a few, they design a few and then show that to you. And then you select one and then the shopkeeper shows you more, then you select based on that, then you select some based on that and finally you buy one. So this one is the multi-objective optimization problem. And this one is called as a multi-criterion decision-making problem. We'll only speak about this over here, the multi-objective optimization problem. So how do I design a few laptops? How do I design a few solutions to this problem? That will be all that my aim would be in this part of the lecture. Now, there are some choices going by this intuitive mechanisms which are very easy to make. So I'll never give an option to choose between these two to the user. I know the user will choose this one. And similarly, I'll never make this option to the user. I know the user will select this one. So let's add this constraint in my laptop design problem. I say the choices which are obvious are not to be given to the user. And in order to make this one, now let's go from a synthetic problem of laptop design to an actual problem which is that I have got in n objective functions. So that's my f1x, that's my f2x and all the way up to fnx. I've got an individual a and I've got an individual b with some values. And let's say that it's a minimization problem for all objectives. Now I say A dominates B, A dominates B if and only if it is better than the individual B in all objectives. It's a minimization problem if it is better than B in all objectives. For all objectives. Now I'll dent this up a little bit to handle equality. So let's handle equality over here. So it's either comparable or it is better for all objectives but then A will dominate B and B will dominate A if they are exactly the same point so I add the criterion and oops so Fi is at least as good as, Fia is at least as good as Fib for all objectives and there exists some objective J such that Fi, Fj, A is significantly better than Fj, B. So in all the objectives, it can be equality, it can be same or better, it can be same or better, it can be same or better, but for one objective, it needs to be significantly better. So let's say if A, A, A dominates B, so better, 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 the moment you get all circles, it is going to be better. So in this case, A dominates B. And similarly, I can write down the converse condition as well. A does not dominate B. And this is the opposite condition. So you can just write the opposite of this condition over here. 
or just put a knot over here. So if some A is better, in some B is better, because in some A is better and in some B is better, therefore I absolutely cannot make a choice. So consider the same thing over here. So this is 9 and therefore this one is better. So in two objectives, A is better, in one objective, B is better. So I'd say A does not dominate B. So that's the definition of the dominance. Now what I will need to do is that I will define another term which is called as a non-dominated individual. And before that, an obvious definition, A is similar to B if neither A dominates B nor B dominates A. So in the same situation, A does not dominate B, it has two objectives, and B does not dominate A, it has one objective. So A is non-dominated to B. This is what we say, A is non-dominated to B. So a non-dominated individual is an individual that is not dominated by any individual in the population pool. So a non-dominated individual is an individual that is not dominated in the entire population pool and therefore let me write down a random population pool and we're just three objective functions so f1 value for the first individual is 2 f2 value for the second objective function value is 3 the third objective function value is 5 remember these are objective function values these are not the decision space values so we're dealing with objective space we're not dealing with the decision space and similarly, I have so let's call it them individuals as x1, x2, x3, and x4, so that they are not integer names. And let us say, let's study x1. So x1 does it dominate x2 so let's compare x1 and x2 2 1 x2 is better however 3 4 x1 is better so x1 does not dominate x2 or x2 does not dominate x1 let's discuss x1 and x3 f1 x1 is better f2 x1 is better and f3 x1 is better so in all case x1 is better so i'll have to write down the inverse as well so x1 does dominate x2 however x2 so x1 is better than all terms x2 is worse than x1 in all objectives so it obviously does not dominate Let's discuss x1 and x3, 2, 7, 2 is better, uh, this has to be 3, let's discuss x1 and x4, 
X1 is better, X2 is better, and X2, four, X4 is better. X1 is better, X4 is better, X4 is better. So X1 does not dominate X4 and X4 does not dominate X1. So using this relation, let's see who what dominates, what does not dominate. So X1 is not dominated by any individual in population. Or there is no XJ which dominates X1. So there does not exist XJ which dominates X1. So you don't see a dominated sign in X1 after that. So X1 is non-dominated. Similarly, X2 is non-dominated. There's no dominated sign and after that X2, X3 is dominated. So X1 is definitely better than X3 and X4 is non-dominated. So this is non-dominated, this is non-dominated, this is dominated by X1 and this becomes non-dominated. I actually did not do it for all of them. So we will have to continue that. If you compare X2 and X4, so X2 and X3, so this is better, this is better, this is better. And similarly for the rest, X2 and X4, this is better, this is better. And similarly 3 and 4, this is better, this is better, this is better. So X4 dominates X3 and X3 does not dominate X4. Now, if you were a laptop design company, this was a very bad laptop. Nobody will buy it. If you were a laptop comp design company, this laptop will not be bought by anyone. People might buy X1 better, better, better. Who will buy a laptop which is worse? In all prospects. So I'll never show this solution to any customer. I will never show this solution to any customer. And therefore I say that my objective of a laptop design, my objective or my aim of making a laptop is to find out good solutions over here, which is good. However, the constraint is Design a few laptops such that all laptops are non-dominated to each other. So there's some, if you take any two laptops, in some perspectives, this laptop is better, in some that laptop is better, and therefore there's at least a decision to make. So my aim is to calculate a set of non-dominated individuals in this population. That is the one that I'll show. In the fashion design, I'll make non-dominated dresses and that's the one that I will show. In my design of a car, I'll make non-dominated designs and then show it to the customer so that there's at least one point in which for any pair of laptops, cars, A and B, this one is better for some, this one is better and therefore person has to think, do I compromise over here or do I compromise over here? For every set, there is something that needs to be decided whether you will take in the first one or instead you will take in the second one. 
Now, that's not the only thing. So, what happens when you go in to buy a laptop from your market and all of them are heavily priced? Some are better in processor, some of them are better in RAM, some are slightly heavily priced, some are slightly lower priced, but all the laptops are too expensive for you. So the laptop company will not be able to make any money in that market. It will absolutely not be able to make any money in that market. So the laptop selling guy is showing you a lot of solutions. It's showing you a lot of good solutions. All of them are non-dominated, but one key that every laptop has is that it's overly priced. So my budget is 50,000 from a personal pocket, from government it's much larger. So, my budget is 50,000, but laptops only 1.5 lakhs, 2 lakh, 3 lakh, 5 lakh are being in the store. So I'll come out of that. I'll say I'm not going to buy a laptop and the customer is lost just because the company did not care about this laptop. So, I also say that such that all laptops are non-dominated to each other and all laptops are diverse. So there are two criterions that I need to do. First is that they are non-dominated to each other and second is that they are diverse. If somebody comes and says that I want something which is extremely low price, there has to be at least a few solutions to choose from. If somebody says that I want a very high config, I'm a gamer, there have to be a few options. If somebody says I need more of Applications running around, so I need high RAM, I don't care about the processor, so they have to be some high RAM configurations as well. So let's redefine multi-objective optimization. So I have a set of objective functions, f1x, that I need to minimize. I have a set of objective functions that I need to minimize. where every variable will have some limits of linear, non-linear constraints. I'll not be writing all of them. So these are my objective functions. And my aim over here is To generate, I cannot generate one solution, a set of solutions. So let's uh, define just a number. So let's say n solutions. Which is the best solution? Only the user will decide using multi criterion decision making. So I need to generate a set of solutions. So let's say n solutions. I need to generate n solutions such that. The obvious things are taken care of. One, all solutions are non-dominated. Otherwise, you've constructed a laptop that nobody will buy. You've constructed a dress that nobody will purchase. You have constructed a car that nobody will purchase. Machine learning as an example, you've got two objective functions. So you want to minimize the loss. And you have the regularization as a second objective. You don't want very complicated machines. So there's a trade-off between loss and regularization. So instead of a human doing all the optimization and trying different trade-offs between loss and complexity, you just say that let me I mean let the machine give me a set of individuals, a set of non-dominated individuals. And then I will look into all of them and decide which one is better. So again, the multi-objective optimization functions don't give uh, two machines such that the first machine is better in terms of loss and the second first machine is also better in terms of complexity. It has lower loss, lower complexity. That would be ridiculous. The user will say, in both objectives, this machine is better. Why do I use the other one? So such that the two solutions are non-dominated and, of course, 
because I have a limit over here, I cannot give one solution in time, so I need high diversity so that everybody has something to choose from. The solutions are diverse. And because this name is into the definition, it has a better name, it's called as a Pareto front. All individuals which are non-dominated to each other, it's what's called as a Pareto front. Uh, now, it may appear that the laptop design was okay, but we normally do a different thing. We solve, it's an optimization problem. The optimized solution is a machine, either a machine learning machine or a calculation machine or a machine which does something, which does some AI, it does some processing. So now how do I justify that the individual need to be asked for a solution? And again, it's not that the machine that gets generated compulsorily requires a human in order to make decision. What you can do is, now that's more of a multi-criterion decision making, what you can do is to give in all the solutions to the, of the Pareto front once to the individual to see what does the individual prefers. The first time you do optimization, the second time you do optimization, you again do the same thing. After you've recorded a lot of preferences of the users, after you've recorded a lot of visions of the users, you know what does the human like and what does the human does not like. And thereafter for further optimization, it could go completely autonomously if the application requires autonomous optimization and implementation of a solution. As an example, I work with a problem called as motion planning. It's a multi-objective optimization problem. How does a robot go from one place to the other? It needs to take a small part, but it needs a high clearance as well and a high smoothness as well. And what really goes upon happening is that there's a trade-off between the two that you need to set for your optimizer. But I can all, and motion planning is real time. The robot will not ask, okay, do I take this part or do I take that part by the time the map will change. So it needs to act autonomously. So I designed a multi-objective optimization problem where I get a bouquet of solutions. I get the Pareto front. I choose one and this is just training. So this is just once. Then I use another map and the robot asks the same question. That's the bouquet of solution. I choose one. The next time I choose another one. By this, the robot has actually learned what are the preferences of the user and what are the th things that user doesn't like. It has learned the parameter that trade off, trades off between smoothness, path length and clearance. And because of that, later, once you get the bouquet of solution, the robot has learned the function, it has optimized the function, it has machine learned the function, which given the bouquet of solution, automatically applies the user's preference as notes from the past data and it selects one solution. So it can carry out autonomously as well. And once it's autonomous, then you see that the robots are making their decisions from multi-objective problems by looking at the past preferences of the user.